okay i guess no so okay we can today start with the airflow basics and we can see a few of them in the airflow okay yeah okay then. So what is airflow? Airflow is just job scheduler, I think. Okay, and then? We have multiple tool, right? Okay. Then, what are the competitive tools? Any guess? We have multiple airflow supported tools, right? Like airflow. Uzi, I think. You can also use Uzi. Correct. So that is a competitor tool. TWS so also kind of TWS, TWS, Tivoli workload scheduler. like scheduler as well as orchestrator orchestrator okay so what is orchestrator it's just controlling your entire the job not only for the schedule it just controlling your job whether the job is completed or not it's the entire it just follow that is the use of this afro tool and advantages, it was created only via Python based. Okay. Okay, we can't use that in Scala, Java, anything. Only Python. No, no, only Python. Airflow. There are n number of libraries available. They are going to just plug and play in Airflow. That's it mainly. Everything, all the scheduling will come with only the one touch access. Okay. Yeah, okay. And what is the level of difficulty to use that airflow? What's up? A level of difficulty to use that airflow. Level of difficulties in that it's not like that. Uh, if you know that concept, okay, first we just start with the basics. But because you must know, right, that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, how we have to start it, that we will be seeing now. So you can start by a airflow with server. Which version we are using? Airflow? Oh. Version, version. Uh, we are using 1.10.9, I guess. Okay. okay. Airflow just started now. This is the web server. Two things is available in Airflow. One is web server. It's just controlling entire job operation. Another one is, is called as scheduler. Here we are using local executor. It's look like our normal environment, pseudo board. The same, they will be go with salary executor. Later part we will be discuss the things, but just for reference, I'm just telling you. Okay. So next flow, you have to start. Another one is scheduler. Okay. So difference between the web server, it just control the entire the job with that thread pulls entirely. But here this scheduler only for the respective task. What are all the tasks you created, right? That task only it just control. That is a major difference. Any doubt in this? No. Dear. Okay, so oh, what I'm thinking for so Python based shell to one tech checks from different environment. You can 
do all the operation with your other environment like uh, cloud and AWS, Azure, you can integrate it, or GCP, you can integrate it, or you'll be using Docker, you can integrate it directly. So everything is possible here. As well as like Chandler or Chester too. Like Uzi and anything else? TWS, Autosys. Oh, Autosys. Autosys. But Autosys, you will be only controlling that schedule, right? Yes, yes. Ask about. TWS also, I think we can use to schedule the job. Which job? TWS. Uh, that, that one built by IBM, I think. We only but, work with the scheduler. Yeah, that is also possible. Okay. So start, you can start this app flow. You have to enable web servers. So web server is control entire app flow things. Another one is scheduler. Scheduler is nothing but control the particular task. Okay, that is the difference between this two. So you have to enable this two. Both we have to enable, right? Yeah. Then only just sync. So command is airflow with server. Uh, so if you want to start with any particular places the our port number then you can mention like i p and you can provide port number by default 8080 if you want to start from 8081 then it will be using this port numbers likewise it enters okay also schedule airflow schedule that's it everything is in spot that is we have seen right now. Are you clear? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. So these are the basics. Um, I just go and going to open it. So you have right there's that URL. So once you scheduled everything, you can come and monitor in this web here. There's the advantage. So whatever you schedule, right, all the information you will get here. How many times it was ran, how many times it was failed, and what is the reason it was failed, all the log information also you'll get it. And when to run it, the timing, right? Every seconds or minutes or whatever, that however, you can mention. And it's like a one touch. If you want to start it, just trigger it. Or if you don't want to start it, just close it. And you can see all the status here and see. There's a success or failed or upstream fail or whatever. Everything you can see here. That is our advantage. But in Uzi, that will be only for Hadoop environment. Apart from other tools, you cannot integrate it. Like Autosys also, they have some restriction. But Airflow is not like that. It's controlled the entire all the tools. If suppose you don't have options, there is no particular operator. Later, I will come with operator and all, but this is the basic. So that things you don't have, then you can directly call via Python operator. Or you using the bash, right? Via command only you can control, right? Few of them. Like yeah, this, yeah. you can do the bashing also. Yeah, okay. top we top can top also top. use the air batch, right? In batch we provide that jobs number of means uh, three or four jobs. Yeah, whatever you can provide. 
Okay, okay. And for that, uh, we can create a ini means a parameter file, right? Yeah, we have to provide that argument. Okay, okay. That we can see from the hands-on notary. Yeah, okay, okay. Still no any question? Ah, uh, no, no. Yeah. Okay. So just we have seen the start. And this one, and this is also will be followed with DAG algorithm. Already we have seen that DAG algorithm, right? Where yes. we have seen? Yes. What is doing DAG? In DAG, uh, we will do a cyclic things only. We are we are not uh, going to that uh, cycle. And we are not come back and again trigger the job. Once we trigger, then we can't do come back. So all the flow will be in single direction. Yeah, will be in same direction. Okay. So like this job here also, the airflow will be following all the tasks with only particular same direction. It will not be reversed. Okay. So that is dagger cardum. They are using it. Yeah. We can what see the. the actually, I have one question. Ah, uh, then is what is the benefit of use that dagger concept? Yeah. Then let's say for example, the job we have run it right. Once That's the right. job is in, then what you have to do? It should come out. If it is a cyclic, then it's going to start from the beginning. Okay. Yes. Am I right? Yes. So yes. we have to avoid it. that. We can achieve via this dagger cardum. If all the pipeline is Is possibly available, then it will be continue from top to end. Once it is over, then it just come out from the end job. That particular job is completed like that. Otherwise, it just scrutinized internally and repeatedly the job will be executed. But that thing we are going to run via our scheduler. That's the reason we will be time we will be following some timeline to schedule it. Am I right? Yes. Yes. So likewise, you can do it. So in DAG you have to use a default arguments. In this default argument only you have to provide how you are going to run it. The things you have to provide in this default argument. What is the owner? Where you are going to run? What is the time you are going to start it? All the information you have to provide in this default argument. Yeah, in, in a frequency in a single day like this, right? Yeah, every day the day particular day time. Yeah. yeah, exactly. When it's going to be start and what time it just going to be start like that? Yeah, here we can also provide that calendar days. It means the Monday to Friday, not including the Saturday and Sunday. Can we do that one? Yeah, that is possible, but um, that by a cron, cron scheduler time, right? You have to follow. Yes, yes. Actually, my project we are using that TWS, so I know about that a uh, little bit. But that's costing. Right? You have to use it. Very huge costing. Okay, but it's like the scheduler. Once you enable, only four to five threads or multi thread. If you are going to use the Kubernetes or Docker, then it will be split across your cluster and will be enabled. Yeah. There is a lot of possibilities available. In case of failure, we can add it and we can run it again. Yeah, correct. Any other question? No. Okay. Next task. So task is nothing but task instance name you have to provide. Okay, the particular certain task you are going to run it. It's a unit of work. Particular job that particular DAG you are going to schedule it while you are going to transfer all the data from Hadoop. Sorry, you are from uh, Hadoop one directory to another directory or Hive directory. That is a one task. Once the Hive directory will be loaded, then you have to migrate that Hive directory data to your Hive partition table. That is another one task. Like that, that work you have to split and provide to the DAG, right? That is the use of task. So this is task name also you should provide in argument. What is the task name you are going to use? Is that kind of information you have to provide that. And that task uh, will be in that batch. Which one? Means if 
if we'll create one batch then inside one batch we will define a different different task right like this are yeah, different yeah inside the pipeline what are the tasks you need to could provide it that should be same pipeline that is the use of dag right you are going to retrieve the data once you retrieve then the next job going to be started am i right yes yes so this is a unit of work that is i'm saying so multiple tasks you can design and provide to them first you have to call the one task and complete that then you can start another task like i'm saying first you have to migrate the data from hadoop environment to hive table hive table external table or whatever you can migrate the data entirely once it is migrated then you have to start from partition table and then you have to go to spark integration and blah 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 whatever everything what are you doing right that is always a kind of task everything you can sync here and you can monitor keep monitor control you, right you don't want to check it again again in the front end that only this way you can see all the information here it says first i can see you just open that and you can see run after loop run this last this kind of things is a kind of task this is the one task i am using once it is done the second task is going to be run okay okay this is dependent task right yeah exactly always in dag will follow with the dependent task okay, okay. but you can create sub dag sub dag also if needed sub branch or sub dag like that one flow will go another flow also separately will go both will be merged in the particular time okay okay so next operators one minute i just store this file so next operator so what is operator it is actually on the particular task what's going to be done actual uh, model while you are going to use some right the bash or whatever that high or hard or spark whatever you are going to run it right that is everything all the task internally it will follow with this operator just a name is called a task whether the task for let's say for example you are going to run the spark job then you can simply inform them a spark job is a task name but internally you can provide spark summit command something am i right so that is the operator that we will be using n number of operator for spark is spark submit operator like that lot of operators are available based on that only you can schedule your job that job we will be using some naming right that will be follow with the task task names you have to provide okay clear yeah okay okay we can cancel like this and this we will be using three types of operators action based transfer based and third one is sensor based okay so action based it just just to trigger it that's it automatically that job will be completed like bash yeah other than that spark submit uh, what is other operator which one other than that is spark submit operator what oh. are the operators yeah bash operator is kind of operator is available okay hmm. okay for transfer we can go with um, file transfer right yes yes hmm. okay just to transferring the data
the between one environment to another environment let's say i have a database in azure i want to migrate the database to aws uh, hadoop environment something okay or aws s3 bucket you have to transfer then you can use s3 file transfers transfer operator something will come okay or like this rds file transfer operator so like this some operators are available you can just using this operator and migrate it that's a simple way right like yes. this hive operator is available spark submit operator and uh, most of you are using st st file rds as well as hive and this one and mysql operator if any integration with ms sql ms sql operator so lot of operators are available just to transforming the data it will not be doing any action behind yeah okay if we want to transfer from mmp server to our local server so how can we which operator we use then you can pro config that server details in your that environment then you can trigger it we will see that simple example one of two we can see okay, okay. that main project right there we can see that any high pro high operator on spark or submit operator there we can see just for the understanding purpose i am saying okay okay yeah. um, okay after this operator we can see small okay, time will be entire okay tomorrow we can see with some like the hands up yeah okay and then the sensor so sensor is nothing but while the data is available then it will be followed it's like a, a monitor watch it okay There is no time limit. Whenever the data comes, it's just going to be checked with this watcher and executor. That's it. That is the use of this sensor. Mm. Few sensors available is a file sensor, file sensor, HD for sensor. Something is available. So like this, few sensors available. Based on that, that data is available in the particular directory. It immediately reflects the integer. it will not be baked okay that is the use of sensors so the so, didn't clean sensor what top is and we are doing i didn't get it's like example in the particular directory if any file comes then immediately i need to start my job okay 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 means so, uh, it will wait uh, once uh, that file will come in particular direct a directory right yeah we will not sure right that file when the file will come to the directory yes yes but whenever the file will comes to the directory immediately we have to populate our operation right yeah correct so that is will be follow with the sensors this like a watcher it okay, keep okay. on watching the directory whether the data will be injected to the directory or load any file any file into the directory immediately just trigger it will not wait clear yeah. okay yeah clear like this we can do it tell me any question so we are we are supposed to give all these uh, items to you know, like when you are going to get time to oh. run the job Uh, why is this breaking, Savita? Can you come again? Yeah. So uh, when we are uh, you know, creating this particular uh, workflow, uh, job kind of a thing, right? So that time yeah. we have to give all these details, is it? Or the sensor and all is going automatically it will work in. Mean, no, it will. Actually, the sensor will help. If the data is available, then you can continue. 
you can go with the scheduler also here every one minute or two minute you just going to schedule it but data is not available all your flow is wasted right uh, am i yeah. correct yeah yeah so, so the time you just wait and will be way uh, check it out if data is available then continue with further talk okay so what i am asking is uh, are we going to give these as arguments or something when we are uh, creating the bar Voices. I'm not getting clearly. Yeah. So, hello. Yeah. Hello. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me. Come again. Ah. Uh, so, are we going to give all these things as uh, arguments in this when you are creating a job or how? Yeah. Yeah. While creating that uh, that airflow job, we have to create. We have to provide this kind of. So these okay. are all the kind of operators. We will okay. see some examples in each one. We will see. how we will be going to work with action transfers and simple this is a major thing will be playing in your system in your app okay. okay all your job right that job it will be followed with this operator only if you are going to work with hive then hive operator you have to use it if you are going to work with oracle oracle operator is available something is available so a lot of operator they will be developed that is actually going to play the role between you and the app store Okay. 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 We, we will see few example. You just understand the concept. I will show that answer to you. Okay. Any other question? I think no question. And no dinas. No question. Okay. Next operator we have covered. Task we have covered. Add basics we have covered. And then add. This is the schedule time. okay and who is the owner that we have to declare and task just basic i just covered and we'll go with the data okay task instance okay we can see like here so this is the five category six category right that is a home page to see entire the flow and then data profiling Okay, in data profiling, we have ad hoc query, charts, and known events. I just noted one by one. Data profiling, I guess, right? Profiling of that. So, data profiling is nothing but it just interface between your operation. You were in Robert, but it should be SQL in Robert only. Otherwise, it will not be supported. Just go. I just select the ADA queries, and in this ADA queries, I can provide that information. I can decide that add flow DB. Likewise, you have configure your all the information, and based on that, you can provide the command, and then it immediately will be done. Okay, there's a DB right. So table something I just declare and run it. Host my SQL no data. I just use this one. Okay, so this is the my SQL I'm going to integrate it. What is the command I have used there? Show tables. So this is the Airflow DB will be located in my configuration. Okay, show tables. This is the command I just read. 
So this is the information, right? The same you can see here. Likewise, you don't want to touch up your other queries. All your workbench or whatever the query, right? You can trigger here itself. That's the one more advantage they will play it. So you don't want to log into MySQL. Already you configured here, you just go and run out this product query request and provide your command automatically will be published to the output. So this will give uh, the command line interface for all time. Exactly, all your environment. It's not for that MySQL. If I suppose connected with the Hive, I can run this environment for Hive. Like this, it is possible. Okay. So what we'll be doing, you don't want, you want, don't want to go open that particular workbench ID, whatever. SQL editor, you don't want to touch it. Everything you can trigger here itself. Clear? As well as chart. If the data outcomes will come, then you can use this chart. And known events. Known events, I cannot remember. I will check and will update you. Mostly, other queries I have used as well as chart I, I have seen. Okay, Basically, in which known... case we are using that ad hoc query example. I didn't get... If suppose I want to retrieve the data, what is the record is available? Based on that, I can design the code flow, right? Then I can run here itself and getting the output. Other queries is nothing but the immediate output. You will not be do anything. Just for the reference, you will be retrieving the data. I want to retrieve the data for particular tables. What is the data? What is the schema? Everything I can see here itself. That is the use of other query. Okay. It's not a batch processing. One time request, everything will come to in the SQL is called as ad hoc query. Simple understanding. Yeah. Yes. Chart is nothing but the ad hoc query output. It can visualize. Sorry, visualized. That is the use of chart. Yeah, doc. Queries. It's like a ripple for simple understanding. I'm saying in Scala, what you're doing is just go and open it and run and getting the output right. It's right like that. You can get the output there. Also, chart visualize the ad hoc query outputs. That's it. Any question, guys? Can we uh, go and check that chart thing? How oh. it is looking? Which one? Uh, ch chart uh, that uh, after ad hoc query, we can, yeah, here only we didn't data profile. We have to properly scheduled, but local executor, I'm not sure, but uh, other things I can see. So, bot chart, whatever, right? I can create and run it. That's it. So I've tried, but mostly ad hoc query only I have used. So something host is missed. So this is a configuration you can configure. Empty result set. I think no record is available in this. Empty set, okay. Task instances available right here. So something is available. I just use this talk.
SQL needs to return at least three columns. One, two as number from task by state. Okay, so that configuration we have to properly schedule. That's an important. You are using the bot chart, right? Then bot chart, what is the output X, Y, Z? Everything you have to configure properly. So once you schedule, automatically you can publish the output directly in chart view. I think you have to select start from something, right? Three columns. Okay, this is a pivot. So like this, it will come ready. I didn't use this chart. Mostly ad hoc query I have used, and I will go for the operation. If you want to know the output in your chart, then you can use this. Okay, this is a major I used. Any question? Next, does if you have any question or we can continue? No, the next you can continue. Okay, so data profiling just to refer what is the data is available. That's it. Browser, you can see this. The, this are all SLA misses. If any SLA is missed, that information will come to this one. Okay, SLA or oh, forget the expansion. If any the time period is missed, then they will yeah, be service called an agreement something. Is there, I service level agreement, yeah. I can remember. SLA is nothing but service level agreement. So in browser, we can see SLA misses. That is, we can see as per task instances. This is the important thing. So task instances only available all your job information okay normal task the particular task is just reference, represent but task instances what are the job is combined or sorry completed or not that particular task that all the state will be provided based on the execution times when the job was run and that what is the task that you will be running and what is the status of the particular task all the information it's a combination of all your task information all the task details okay it's like a history information when the job is completed all the details you will get it from here next log particular job log you can see otherwise directly you can go here just click that particular job whatever the job is running you just simply click on the job mm. And then you have the top right. Just click the particular task and you can see the log. What is the status of this particular job and task that is logged it is? Whether it is completed or not, like that, all the information you'll get. The same way you can come here also. Log information that re respect to the job you can locate it. And see the task information for you. There's a log information. Entire log will be published. Each task while running again and again, new log will be created. Okay.
there. So whenever you will be scheduling the job, each task will run. It's just going to be create one task ID, and inside the task ID, that all the log will be stored. Demo session, I will show you what it is. Just for the understanding, I am telling you. Clear, guys? Yeah, clear. Okay. So already time up. So tomorrow we will continue the further and we'll go with selected files. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. Do you have any question, others? No, Dinesh. I don't have any question. Okay, guys. Thank you. We will see you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dinesh. Yeah. Okay. Bye.